so I'm Päivi and I'm I'm from Finland and I'm Finnish artist and today we're talking about drawing. If there would be an ambassador of drawing, I would want that job because it's my favorite topic. I don't know why, but drawing has always uh, fascinated me and I've always wanted to learn how to draw. And, you know, there's so many layers. So first you you try to learn to draw when you're a small child and then uh, when you're a bit <laughs> older, you realize you can't draw and it seems that it's like an onion, new layers coming up all the time. And I, but I thought that today we're talking about the joy of drawing. And of course, we also have to talk a bit about why we don't draw so much as we could and how could we draw more and how could we enjoy drawing more. So that's the main topic. And I'm also going to draw a bit here. I uh, doesn't have any special setup, but I'm just trying to draw a bit like this and maybe a bit clumsy, but I don't think you, you, you probably <laughs> mind because I don't think uh, when we talk about drawing i don't think it's the first thing you should think think about how clumsy your drawing is i think it's an inner conversation with you and the pen and that's the most important part that's the foundation if you have a pen and paper uh then uh, join me when i draw but drawing doesn't take uh the whole session or anything i just draw a little bit of here and a little bit there and you can you can join me if you want this webinar is also an introduction to my upcoming class animal inkdom and the class starts on monday and it's all about drawing so if you've already signed up and you're here that's wonderful because this is such a good introduction to the class and if you haven't signed up yet uh, uh there's uh, there should be a button below me where you can sign up and i also share the link in the chat and um but but i'm talking about drawing in general too so so no worries there the first thing when you think about drawing and think about supplies is of course, you think about pencils, aren't you? And uh, and uh, of course, you can just grab any pencil or then there are specific fine art pencils. Uh, and uh, even if it's such a simple supply, you can draw just brilliantly using only a pencil. And uh, if you're using pencil just for sketching, so for the first layer, then I would recommend size 2B because this size, uh, this uh, softness or hardness is really easy to erase. And I use kneaded eraser for, for uh, removing uh, the pencil marks. This eraser can be bought from art supply stores and it's excellent for erasing uh pencil marks but of course you can use a regular pencil a regular eraser too if you want and if you're using a pencil then it might be that you want the paper to be a bit coarse, coarse. so you might want to buy something like sketching paper or actually you can really use any paper because i don't think paper should be any problem. But of course, if you want to make a drawing that lasts from generation to generation, you want to make sure that it's acid free paper, but um, any any sketching paper will do and any any paper will do really. But how I like to draw is draw with ink pens. I have just this kind of jar, it's filled with ink pens and I also have small scissors because I also like to draw collage pieces uh, and uh, I, I thought you, uh, I think you saw the, the butterfly that was in the picture. So I love to also draw collage pieces and play with those and I, I'll show more of those during this webinar. So I love to draw with ink 
And then uh, sometimes I color the drawing and sometimes I don't. But the lovely thing with drawing with ink is that if you use water resistant uh, ink pen, then you can use watercolors, you can use all kinds of markers, felt tip pens, colored pencils, anything, and you can also layer them. So um, uh, I, I would make sure that your uh, pen is water resistant, that has permanent ink, if you want to color it, especially uh, with watercolors or, or markers or felt tipped pens. So I have several um, pens here. I also have some some refillers here because some pens are such that you can uh, also fill them. I have pencil brush pen uh, that uh, has those cartridges and this is just a brush, uh, brush tip and it's quite lovely to draw with these. But usually I use uh, Copic multiliners. So I have a lot of Copic multiliners, different sizes, and uh, I like the size to be thin at first. So, for exa example, Copic multiliners, the smallest size that I have seen is 0 0.05. And then when the drawing gets a bit, uh, gets more details and such, I move to a bit thicker tips often. So I have 0 0.05, then uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1 uh, 0.0, and I also have a small brush uh, pen, uh, Copic multiliner. And uh, I like, I also like this brush pen, and these both brush pens are wonderful. But I wouldn't couldn't draw with brush pens only. Uh, so I know some people do, but I like very detailed drawing, as you've probably seen lately. So I start with a very thin tip. And because I start with very thin tip, I've also found a brand, uh, Delita Neo Pico. And this brand also have 0 0.03. And you know, when if you compare the brands, the thicknesses of the tip, the, the, the number is not standard. So, uh, but this is a bit thinner than Copic Multiliner. But if you buy a different brand, you should always try it because the tip can be zero point something and then it, it can uh, be totally similar than, than zero point, 0, 0.0 something when you when you're using the other brand but I like to start with a thin tip and then move towards thicker ones but if you're just starting to draw with ink I recommend 0 0.3 because uh, these 0, 0.0 <laughs> numbers they feel really thin at first but then when you get used to it you can uh, pick a smaller, smaller pen. And uh, often when I make videos and such, I use at least 0 0.1 because it shows better on the videos. And I think that I choose 0 0.3 for, for this live so that, so that you can see it better than 0 0.05. So those, uh, I use those regularly and I've been using those pens for all the drawings that you see here. And you know, there are several, several brands. If you search for drawing pen or ink drawing pen, you get several brands and I've used many of those and I, I like them. But uh, recently I've used Copic Multiliners because it it's easier if you have one brand and and you know one number because then you don't have to figure out what uh, is what in other brand but uh, just uh, make sure that the ink is that the ink is persistent if you want to use water so soluble stuff so that's about supplies oh one more thing 
Um, when you're drawing with ink pen, you want to choose paper that is smooth. So you can just have a regular uh, copy paper if you don't have anything else. And it doesn't have to be that serious or that uh, big investment. But what I use is, um, for of course, sketchbook. I have Nuna's, this is a German manufacturer, uh, sketchbook. And it has very smooth paper and I, I like it. Um, then if I make a drawing that I want to, um, that I take a bit more seriously and that uh, takes a bit more time to draw. Uh, my choice is usually uh, Fabriano Bristol, but this Bristol paper doesn't mean that this is Fabriano's brand. It means that it's a paper quality. So you can pick almost any brand of paper uh, from art supply stores and look for name Bristol. And Bristol means it's really white and it's really smooth. So uh, it's, it's a lovely, lovely paper and uh, often used by uh, designers and illustrators. Of course, Bristol paper is not watercolor paper, but you can use it with watercolors too, because, uh, you know, you can use a lot of different kinds of paper with watercolors if you just uh, use water a bit less than just pick bottles. <laughs> but um, uh, of course, you can also use watercolor paper. And I've actually found that uh, the the best watercolor paper is actually quite cheap if you consider ink drawing. Uh, so I use Fabriano's Studio watercolor paper, and this is not very thick because I also like to create these collage pieces uh, and color them wat with watercolors. And uh, it's if you use very thick paper, the um, result when you start gluing them them down it's 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 quite bulky so you might want to choose a bit thin thinner watercolor paper than than usually so this is 200 grams per square meter so 90 lbs uh this uh, um thickness and then uh uh, in uh, Animal Inkdom, I also draw um, some drawings and show some drawings that I have drawn just a regular notebook. Because I think that drawing shouldn't be something that you separate somewhere. That drawings can be just in your regular notebook. So, so I've just uh, made small drawings uh uh on a on a notebook and uh you can you can make um for example it's a lovely gift to make a notebook that has drawings here and there i actually got that kind of gift when i was some about 10 or 12 from my cousin and i always remember it i think it's a lovely gift uh to have an empty notebook where you have drawn uh on some pages and decorated some pages. Very personal gift. So uh, just smooth notebook paper. And this is actually dotted uh, uh, notebook. So uh, uh, easier to write straight uh, if you want. And uh, uh, the ink drawings are so strong, so they don't mind about the dots. So any pen, any paper, <laughs> but if you want to draw with uh, color with watercolors, uh, then I recommend uh, ink, ink pens. So uh, then let's look at the talk about the drawing in a kind of everyday perspective, because I want uh, to talk about drawing so that it's quite grounded. So the first thing, I think I thought about the things that 
um, often make us stop drawing and uh, often prevent us start drawing. And, you know, when I think about myself drawing lions, I love to, I love to draw African safari. I loved Joy Adamson. Uh, if you if you remember Choi Adamson, the, the tamer, uh, the the lion lady, <laughs> and Elsa, yeah, chances Elsa, Elsa the lion. I I loved those books, and I also loved the TV show that was running uh, back then in the seventies, and and I draw lots of lions, antelopes, and and I think that the earliest drawing that I ha my mother has saved is is, is a lion drawing. <laughs> so <laughs> if I think about that time and what has happened me to me during the years. Then there's always some period when I've stopped drawing. And then when I've started again, it's like when you start choking or, or when you start gymnastic again, it's quite agony. I wrote this when I participated in Inktober, uh, the challenge uh, where uh, that happens every October where people draw ink drawings. And uh, I had to get this out, this, this thing that when you have done too much and it feels like you have done nothing yet and you have too much stuff to sort out and it feels like you haven't got all you need and you are at the bottom of the big pile and the clock is ticking, don't forget you are late. And, you know, this, this thing often stops us from doing all the fun stuff like drawing. I've been thinking many times that what could keep me drawing, even if I'm a full-time artist, there are some times where I have to for example when i'm preparing for a class it takes quite a long time to edit all the videos because i want to pro provide edited videos that are entertaining educational fun not just something that i've started the camera and then stopped the camera so it usually takes mm, a lot lot more time to edit the videos than to record them so it there there are many many days when i don't have any time for drawing but still it's really important uh, the same thing if you if, i don't know if you remember when you uh, were at school and you the, with the maths if you stop can't, if you stop doing the maths, it's really difficult to start again, start cal calculating and counting again. So it's the same thing with drawing, that if you don't draw, it, it gets kind of rusty. So my solution here has been to draw just one little piece. And I have this, the box of joy. It's filled with uh, collage pieces. And if I don't have time, or if I have just tiny scrap of paper, I draw a small flower. And uh, uh, actually, I've noticed that I also think about this as my shop, my personal shop. So uh, I've noticed that my best sellers are small flowers and all kinds of tiny objects. And, uh, you know, there's, there's always something where I can attach this kind of small flower. And even the smallest little things, they usually sell out really quickly. So this is my tip for you who thinks that you don't have time is to just Keep, have a jar of pens, keep it somewhere where it's visible and have some scraps of paper and then just draw something, a little flower or something and keep that routine going on on those days. And I think that we all also need that kind of breaks. Let's just draw a small flower here. Let's just get the routine started. 
So what I like to do, do when starting a flower, this is just, of course, there's so many ways to draw a flower, but this is just something that is, I think it's the quickest. So I just draw a circle. And then what I like to do is to just draw a few lines there. And then these can be kind of guidelines for the petals. And then uh, I can draw the petals here. And I try to keep my hand quite trembling so that the line is quite living. Because I think that if you just draw quick circles, you know, um, sometimes that is not drawing in a way that you really put your mind into it. The easiest shape to draw is a circle. And uh, often it's easy to, it's like you if, you, if you think about yourself as a sea, when you draw circles, you just in the surface of the sea. But when you start to make your line more rambling and traveling, then you get deeper to the sea. And then you can also draw another circle. And you can also start with two circles. And then, then I just feel the bigger circle just by circling my pen. So I add some texture there. there. It's just circling line so then you can also add some some crossing lines in the center so that's how this flower has been made looks a bit like a jewel already of always when you draw flowers the shadows are such fun to draw you can draw more wrinkles there uh to the petals And then you can start adding more shadows. And I also always like to add um, shadows between the petals and around the center. So that the center really pops. And I can always, you know, when the petals are not so perfect, I can always add more. I can adjust them without using a pencil. And it actually looks much, much better when the first wrong lines show, doesn't it? Looks lovely when there's these sketching lines too. So I can add some, some shadows there. I'm just adding short lines around the flower. A bit difficult to draw like this, but some shadowing. Looks pretty. Yeah, center is popping, really. Yeah, the, often when we draw uh, the shadows, we forget them. And those just make such a big difference. Another thing, thing to do is to, with flowers, often the, the, the ends of the petals have some shadows too. The flowers actually have a lot of shadows. So looking much more three-dimensional. So it doesn't really take a long time to draw like a flower like this and you know then you can color it next time uh you can you know then cut it out put it to the piece of the box of joy and you feel really accomplished when you look at your box after after a few weeks so th that's my solution for those who don't have much time I also like to consider, uh, consider this when creating classes. So the box of joy is not a class. It's just my name for the box uh, where I store my collage pieces. But uh, uh, 
uh, if you want to build your box of joy, you can come to my class, Animal Inkdom, where we not only draw animals, we also decorate them, and we also draw all kinds of decorations that can go with them. This is something that I often, often have, that I've seen something really inspirational. And often we whistle people, we often see something. Of course, we can also hear some music that really inspires me or we have we've seen the movie that really inspires me for example i think that marie antoinette movie uh, that that uh, latest marie antoinette movie by sophie coppola that that is just uh, something that i i just don't i don't know how much i just few minutes of that movie it's kind of starts the inspiration inspiration in me another thing that really inspires me are russian hand decorated plates that have dark uh that are very black plates with really strong flowers and uh colorful flowers and i love those so um that is when you when you see something really inspirational that is a good moment to start drawing and uh, 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 now comes the big question and big thing, I can't draw. I've said this so many times, you can't believe how many times I've, I've said this. And I've heard so many people say it, that they can't draw. They often talk about stick figures and uh, that they can't even draw a stick figure. And, and uh, it's such a sad thing to say. But I also think that sometimes we all were, uh, we have kind of, how many people say that they can't write? You know, it's, I think that drawing and writing should be quite equal and we shouldn't um, prevent ourselves from drawing and we shouldn't uh, prevent other people <laughs> from drawing either with this things. Still, I feel that it's good to say this sometimes because uh, if you go deeper, what does it mean to you? What does it mean that you would say that you can draw? That's quite of interesting question. And I've noticed something that I've noticed this really peculiar thing that uh, when I started uh, this challenge last October, this Inktober challenge, I started drawing a lot more uh, figurative and representational images than I had uh, been drawing for quite some time. And suddenly my husband said to me that, baby, you, you, you do, you really can draw. And, and I thought that, now I'm hearing this from my husband and he's been with me so, for so many years and seen me drawing this and that for all those years. And then uh, one of my friends said to me that, baby, you've got, uh, got uh, more drawing skills in a really, really fast speed. And uh, that's, that's not the case. It's just that I drew more representational stuff. So if you want people to say that you can draw, then draw something representational and use some references too, because it's easier to draw representational stuff if you use reference photos. So then people can easily compare and say if you can draw or not. But, uh, I don't know if you're like me, but but to me, it has never been enough to draw, to copy an image or to, or to draw something that is strictly representational. And uh, uh, that hasn't given me the feeling that I can really enjoy, I can really connect with the pen and with my emotions and uh, that has been something that has uh, often come out if I continue drawing for a while. But when I start, I often start with re really wild doodles because that gives me the sense of confidence. And that confidence 
tells me that I can draw, even if other people would think that I would just, I'm just scribbling and doodling like a mad person. So um, uh, my suggestion is that when you see something inspirational, connect with that emotion and then just scribble, doodle, cut, collage, do anything that uh, uh, maintains that inspiration and don't let anyone take away the joy of not following a horizontal line. And with this, I mean that if you think about writing, that when we write, we really follow a horizontal line. And often the notebooks even have the horizontal line. But I think it's so sad. And if you think about uh, the horizontal line as they can be like bars in a cage. That's how I see them sometimes, that we are restricted in a, in a cage when we write. And then when we start uh, scribbling and doodling, we open the cage, we start flying, and we can really enjoy drawing. So when I start scribbling and doodling, the thing is that you have to just shut down all the inner critics, shut down all the people who say you can or you can't draw. Don't think about anything, but just connect with, with yourself and with your emotion and just let your pen, uh, uh, just let your pen uh, go freely there. But you know, there's many kinds of scribbles. So one, where the scribble is something really lightly and just just circling your pen like this. And again, this is like if you, you're the ocean, this is like just touching the, the surface. So when you're scribbling and doodling, focus on the pen and the hand. And um, I often think that my hand is has certain kind of wisdom that my brain doesn't have so i try to appreciate my hand and i try to focus on the hand and give all the attention to my hand that it needs and i also like to keep the pace a bit uh, fast faster than just uh, uh, than just uh, very very slowly um, because it shows the heaviness the the heaviness of the line and so you, you kind of need to examine this a bit to find the the, the speed uh, the right speed and often if you hear listen to music then it can help and start with the slow music and then when you get hang of it change the a bit um, a bit uh, faster paced one so when I draw uh, I also like to cross cross, uh, what I've what I've drawn because um, this way I can I can do something that is prohibited because it's prohibited to you know to make this kind of messes and I like to experience that I like to cross the line remove the bars and also uh, have uh, uh, break the rules <laughs> and just just draw. And, and I can also draw, do something really prohibited, like drawing on the top of that flower. And if you look at my uh, one of my collages there, um, uh, I've used both uh, doodles there and then also some collage pieces. So your box of joy can also include all kinds of scribbles and doodles that you also combine with the, the more representational drawings. Then, of course, uh, I think that this is the most difficult thing when you're really feeling blue. I often get it this way, that I want to do something, but I'm not inspired by anything. And I feel that nothing makes sense and there's the lack of energy. And now when it's winter, when I wake up early in the morning and it's dark and I know that after a few hours it's dark again because the Finland, Finland 
in the winter is not a very nice place. But what to draw then when you're feeling blue? I have maybe a solution that you might not accept, expect, and that is to draw something really funny. What I've noticed and what I've especially noticed last year, when my word for the weir, year was deep, that the deeper I go and the more uh, solutions I can find, there's, there's kind of something really superficial coming up, something really joyous and something really humorous too. And I started to draw all kinds of really funny stuff and uh, co combine all kinds of fun things together. For example, uh, I, have, I have this um, collage here too. I thought about combining birds and hearts and then well, that's quite a romantic theme, isn't it? If you think about that, birds and hearts. But then I thought, why not play with that a bit? Why not make a heart that is a bit like fur? Why not uh, put some clothes to the bird? Why not have uh, something on the hair and and why <laughs> and all that stuff? And and I had a lot of fun drawing this. I actually draw much deeper illustrations if I also draw something really humorous. Uh, it's kind of that your creativity needs the both ends of the, of the spectrum. And I've also, that's why I've also made the class Animal Inkdom so that we don't only draw serious stuff. Or you can just draw serious stuff if you want. Uh, but I've also included some funny ideas there to draw some really funny stuff. Let's draw something funny. One easiest thing to draw, draw something funny is to draw some kind of animal. I think that animals are pretty funny. And so then you don't have to focus on the facial features and perfecting them because uh, animals have often really simple features. And then when animals, uh, when, you, when you can put something there, uh, something quite absurd, the, the animals look really funny. So now when I've drawn these, these scribbles and flowers, let's draw something there. Maybe just, just maybe a bird. Doesn't have to be uh, very complicated. Just a bird. And what does, would this bird do? Um, what I, one of my favorites is of course, uh, to put something on, uh, maybe a small hat on her, on her head. And then, Always when drawing, a uh, good thing is to connect stuff. So uh, maybe uh, this maybe this uh, hat could also have some connection with the flower, and uh, maybe maybe there could be some. some berries and, and such too. So then some shadows, the bird, and of course, if it's connected with the flower and behind the flower, lots of shadows there. Looks like a very busy bird. And of course, uh, you can also continue the bird. So that the bird continues there. And you also have a layered drawing there. Kind of good sketch to start 
making the shadows a bit bit more careful and and continue that drawing there so it's not that difficult to draw something funny then i want to talk about something that people often say to me that uh, they should really focus that they uh, create all kinds of art all kinds of craft and when they want to move forward as an art as artists or they want to just move forward in their with their creativity they feel that they need to focus and uh, uh, you this is this is for all of you who feel that you would accomplish so much if only you could focus and uh, i think that focusing is not about finding one subject or one topic or using one medium or using one technique i think that fo this focus that you're missing is something uh, much um much deeper but it doesn't have to be very difficult what i have noticed last year is that uh, things that make me focus are the things that i would i don't i haven't ever expected to be such things and this is when uh, it's getting a bit deeper so i feel that drawing is curating and if you th think about artists throughout centuries why have they made sketches why have they drawn even if they have created beautiful big paintings why have they have they drawn and maintained their skill for drawing it's because drawing is curating when you draw you start to pick and choose what you want to draw and that way you are all or curating your drawings too but my advice for the curating part is that you should draw what you secretly love and this is not easy because what you secretly love isn't something that uh, you um, often even acknowledge and uh, uh, these are thoughts that you often think that they are bad thoughts and you should stop thinking about them. And uh, so my, my advice is that draw what feels inappropriate or in forbidden and draw what feels too difficult to draw. Draw what feels too old fashioned or too superficial or too depressing to draw. Draw things you don't want to own. This has been big to me. That I am thinking about. Some, some, somebody says, oh, I've got a new uh, car or something. I think, oh, I wouldn't like to have the, all these things around me. I'm quite minimalistic often. But then there are still quite a lot of stuff in the world that I secretly love. I wouldn't necessarily want to own them and store them. But I would, I really adore how they look. And this drawing called Antonina, which you see here, is has has a collection of all the all kinds of things that I really love. I love Fabergé eggs. I've combined those. The bird. I love jewels. Uh, I love uh, steampunk. I love all kinds of tassels. I love uh, fur. And this is something where it's it comes to the forbidden part because I love animals. I don't, I'm, I'm not a big supporter of animal, wear, people wearing animal fur and such, but I love the aesthetic of it. Then put them all together in a surprising way. And uh, I have a story about this. And you might think that uh, you don't want to draw what's too depressing or such. But remember that this is the combination of something that you secretly love and something that you also find depressing. And uh, something that you secretly love and something that you feel too difficult to draw. And something that you secretly love and something that feels forbidden. And uh, uh, I have, to me, 
it was a big, big thing. It all started last year. It's all started with this drawing that I drew. If you can see it, I drew as the first exercise when I was studying industrial engineering. We had to design gloves and uh, sport gloves. And I, uh, oh, that was, that was my assignment. Um, other people drew other stuff. And um, uh, we had to draw a set of images to show how they are used. So very uh, common for designers is to uh, have this kind of assignment where you show the product where it's in, in the surroundings, where it's used. And, and I drew this, this piece. And uh, the teacher looked at this piece and uh, kind of smiled a bit in a, not in a, in a very good way. And she said that this is not the way to draw these pictures. It really hit me that you shouldn't draw like that. So this was too rich she said this was too complicated too rich i should have just drawn images side by side and focus on the essentials and uh, i should learn how to simplify and that was a good comment for that situation for that industrial design assignment but it i kind of saved it so deep that I realized that when I started making these ink drawings, I, I realized that I said to myself that, baby, now be careful not to draw too rich things. And that's kind of absurd because nowadays when I'm artist, uh, it isn't about drawing products. It's more like more about drawing ex expressing by drawing and I can draw as rich as I want. But I realized that I really had this creative block that uh, I have really thought, and, and then I really thought about this and I realized um, that there was another teacher who also said something like that, that all my drawings looked like Russian icons or something. And, uh, you know, I, have, I had uh, painted Russian icons when I was a child and we were living near, near the Orthodox Church. And um, I, I really felt that uh, I shouldn't draw like that. And when I realized that, often acknowledging removes the creative block, it, it really felt that, okay, I can draw whatever I want, really. And I want to say to you that you can draw whatever you want, but you also have to go through uh, these kind of things. When have people said to you that that's not the way to draw or that's just scribbling or, um, or just qu being quiet and you've sensed their reaction? So... Uh, these kind of small moments can really affect to your art making. And uh, that's uh, why I wrote there that draw what feels uh, too depressing to dig out the, these kind of creative blocks. But then, uh, uh, you know, when you put these all together in a surprising way, it really, it really comes uh, comes to a new world. Your focus is not that you decide that you just use acrylic paints and you paint portraits, or you just uh, decide that you just create pencil drawings uh, that uh, are like, for example, dogs. Uh, that is not focus. That limits your creativity and that suffocates. That's really suffocating. And that's not what creativity and creating art is about. I think that your focus is about building your world. And uh, it can start with this small piece of collage that can be your first 
peace for your world. But when you start building your world, when you start curating your world, when you start spreading it all out like I have done there, uh, putting them all on the table and seeing if they all, all fit and look uh, together, look good together. And if I like them all, uh, if they bring me satisfaction, if I want to, when them these animals, I want to have the feeling that I want to pet them. So that is the focus, I think, that that uh, it's more about building your world and curating your world and uh, then just deciding a very narrow focus by choosing tech, one technique or one theme or one supply. As you can see, I have drawn some really humorous stuff, some much deep, deeper stuff. I also paint and all this drawing is also foundation for my painting. Uh, and this says, in a way, this teacher with her criticism thought you'd draw for yourself and not for anybody else. Consequently, you found your own style. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. And that's also why I think it's also good to could to have people comment your art because even if they would comment them in a in a sort of in a way that is not related to your situation or your motives uh, in a different era for example like in my case it can be really good and revealing and i i think that many who say that they are self-thought they often miss this part that uh, that they haven't got a lot of comments. And that's also for why I have also have a group called Feedback Circle in my community where you can get monthly feedback for your work when you want to move forward. So uh, you can also uh, join that circle from my website, www.pionianparakeet.com. Uh, I want to say a few words about my uh, upcoming class. The class starts on Monday and it's uh, divided into two weeks parts and we, we draw wild, wild animals, but we decorate uh, them and we make them on uh, just totally uh, what we want from them. Not just, this is not a biology class, this is a class about the joy of drawing and drawing uh, um, from the inspiration of fire, wildlife, decorative motives, patterns, uh, and I also uh, draw desserts, uh, stars, jewels, uh, knitted fabric, all kinds of stuff that you can um, you can uh, draw and and also doodle and have some free drawing too. I also share the the link for for my class. I hope you join. And uh, those who have already joined, uh, thank you. And we have lots of lots of fun there. And uh, I want to say about this class so that this are, this projects that are very small and simple too. And it's not about creating just huge illustrations or such. It's uh, more about uh, drawing animals so that you can draw them easily, learning simple anatomy of them, and then also get your imagination going with all the decoration and all the lovely stuff. And I, I close this video so that I can show some of these color species uh, more closely. This is one of my favorites. And when I talked about petting something, uh, I, I think, I don't know if I can glue this anywhere. I just love to pet this bird. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, uh, lots of, I have a bigger box, box that you have over there. That's my another box of joy because, you know, all these birds don't fit into the small box. And so I have also have to have a bigger box. So the first project of the class can be that you start decorating your box of joy and start making some decorations. You already saw this fish. I show some, some, I love to make some cakes. 
one really easy project make some waves and uh, you know combine them with the fish looks just wonderful and then the funny thing is that you can really combine these waves and make them like uh, uh, hair or anything so yeah you can do so much stuff with these of course butterflies really wonderful to draw i also show an easy way to draw butterfly i think that flying bird is something uh when i talked about drawing serious drawing humorous drawing um how would i say drawing in any style you might want to draw a flying bird and also show an easy way to draw a flying bird and how to start drawing that. Because even if you can use reference photos, and I also show how you can use reference photos, uh, I think that when you understand some of the basic things in structure and some of the guiding lines that you can use, then when you draw without references, or you can just glance at the references quickly, then the joy of drawing comes closer. And that's also the thing that has been to me that, that even if, if drawing, taking one photo and drawing that really accurately is kind of meditating stuff, that has never satisfied um, me because I love to build my world and I love also to build my world so that I'm not uh, just limited by the photos that I can take or find. And uh, so, so I, I also want, I also have a project, uh, one, one small most project every two weeks where we draw without any references and uh, use that. I also have collage inspiration uh and every thing and this uh, this one bird too so uh i also like to play with very decorative stuff and if you think about this isn't it quite folk style stuff this this bird so yeah but then of course you can you can draw just hearts flowers anything i show all the shadowing and stuff how you can make it easy and it's it's a really fun class and i have to say this is my favorite of all the classes that i've done so far and maybe it's because last year was such a deep dive into my artistry that i found the new kind of joy uh, that uh, feels both deep and both kind of light and cheerful at the same time. And it really shows in that class. And it, I really felt when I've made the recordings, I really felt that, that joy. And I hope you, you feel that joy there too. So uh, thank you for, for following me so, so for so long. And I hope you got a lot of inspiration. And it, this was just a small, small percentage of everything. But uh, I hope you join to build your world with me. And I, whatever you do, I hope you continue drawing. And, uh, you know, it's really important for the visual people to draw. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.